Hi there YouTube, this is Daniel back again with another YouTube video and uh, this time it's one of those uh, comic book haul videos for the month of July and I have a nice stack of books here, four weeks of comics to show you and to talk a little bit about. So the first issue I picked up in July was uh, Savage Things, or among the first issues uh, was Savage Things issue 5. Uh, a miniseries in eight parts, uh, so a couple of more issues now. Um, I'm starting to see where they are going with the series and what the end, end game might be. Uh, I find it really interesting and the artwork really plays into the story well uh, or serves the story well. Uh, so Justin Jordan and Ibrahim Mustafa is doing a good job with the series and I hope to see more uh, in the same caliber. Uh, in the future for from Vertigo. So Hawkeye uh, issue 8 uh, by Kelly Thompson and Leonardo Romero. Um, we have started a new arc with the issue 7 and it's basically uh, Kate Bishop's father and Madame Mask who might be the antagonist of the story this time around. Um, it's gonna be interesting to see how this plays out, but um, I'm starting to lose interest even though I find Kate Bishop fun to read as a character, I'm starting to lose interest in the story arcs they are uh, giving us uh, lately. Yeah. And then we have a Batman issue 26, uh, the War of Jokes and Riddles. Uh, a second uh, build-up uh, issue basically and I'm getting the feeling that it's basically Batman retelling or Bruce Wayne retelling uh, this whole event uh, for um, Selina Kyle. <laughs> um, I'm guessing we are going, going to towards the end of the arc, gonna see what Batman had to do uh, in order to kind of end this war of uh, jokes and riddles. Um, I find it well written, but it's slow going. Um, and we aren't really seeing um, more of the actual war. It's basically some splash pages here and there and it's not really uh, doing it for me, at least. Uh, but I still like uh, the premise of it. And then we have 7 to Eternity issue... Um, what is it? 7? Yeah. Uh, with a new artist, a guest artist, James Herron. Uh, I think I've read his artwork in Rumble. Uh, and I find that artwork awesome. Uh, fits the story well and it's, it was interesting to see his take on these characters that uh, Rick Remender and Jerome Pena has designed and uh, created um, but yeah it's not the same as uh, Jerome Pena but I still enjoyed his artwork and with this issue and I guess the next one when he's the guest artist as well is taking the story on a bit of a tangent and we're gonna get back to the main story uh, with uh, the Osiris and the Mud King running off um, uh, with uh, issue 9 I think. And then we have Extremity issue 5, really like this series uh, and it's getting dark. Uh, the revenge story that I've been mentioning uh, previous whole videos, um, it's getting darker for each issue and it kind of takes unexpected turns somehow um, which is really refreshing even though it's really dark I find it really uh, interesting an interesting read and the artwork and the paneling is really good as well and I want to show you guys um, some of the paneling I'm talking about So this series um, is getting darker and darker for each issue and 
it's gonna be interesting to see what Daniel Warren Johnson does with the series in the future. And I think the first uh, arc is gonna conclude or somehow tie things together uh, in the sixth issue that's coming up this week, I think. And then we have Grass Kings issue number five. Um, I really do like the series and I like the fact that we each time we open a new issue we get some sort of event that happened around the lake uh, in previous generations or in history uh, so we get like a sense of uh, how life has played out around this uh, mysterious lake not, not maybe maybe not mysterious lake but uh, I think you know what I mean it kind of sets gives the area uh, life, so to say, uh, gives it uh, depth, and I find the artwork really good as well. Uh, Here is some of the what I mean. And then I picked up Defenders, the Defenders issue three, and I'm getting the feeling that we are focusing on Jessica Jones and Luke Cage, and I'm feeling that. Daredevil and Iron Fist are being a bit sidelined uh, but we're probably gonna get uh, more of the depth of their characters or uh, exploring their characters in future issues or future story arcs but um, yeah don't get fooled uh, the Punisher doesn't play that big of a part in this issue <laughs> uh, but yeah I find it really uh, a good series to start uh, with the first couple of issues basically. And then we have uh, Batman Detective Comics issue 960. Um, I like this arc. Uh, I'm getting the feeling that we have two different stories told and that's gonna be tied together at the end I guess but I'm not sure how uh, or if it's just Batman going on a side mission with the team with Batwing, Batwoman, etc. Uh, dealing with the Asriel and the uh, Order of Doom, Doomas. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I can't remember the name of the um, secret order that Asriel used to be a part of. Uh, but it's really getting interesting with these uh, next couple of issues, I guess. Uh, and it's going to be interesting to see how they wrap it up. Uh, or if it's going to be wrapped up or just pushed into the next arc, I don't, I don't know. Then we have The Flash, number 26, uh, Running Scared, part 2, and the artwork by Howard Porter is just... Uh, I think it fits perfectly with, uh, um, with uh, The Flash and how he his superpower is portrayed. And I find this arc really interesting uh, because you get like a sense of who Eubard Thorne is and why he does what he does. It kind of gets explained uh, with, these, uh, with this arc. Um, and at the end of this issue, uh, that was a bit of a uh, cliffhanger. Then we have the Hulk, issue number eight. Um, I kind of have the same um, problem with this series as I did with uh, Hawkeye. It's, I'm kind of losing interest with the series, but I do find the character uh, interesting to read and I want to know more and I want to know how uh, this new Hulk is going to be used uh, in the future if she's going to be join, uh, joining a team or if she's gonna just be solo uh, from now on. Uh, still interesting to see with this uh, new uh, sort of uh, drug uh, that turns people into sort of monsters. I don't know if this ties into this Monster Unleashed thing or I have not read that one, but yeah, still interesting. And then we have Kill or Be Killed issue 10, uh, basically a sort of wrap up of the second arc uh, the tangents that we have been taking with the second arc 
are being kind of tied together now with this issue and I find that really uh, really interesting to read and I think the Russians are gonna take a bigger part on center stage in the next arc so to say and I find that really cool as well and this is basically my favorite creative team uh, in indie comics at least uh, Sean Phillips and Ed Brubaker uh, the writing the drawing and the colors by Elizabeth Brightweiser is just awesome as well and uh, I think we're gonna get all those cool winter scenes again uh, with that, that we did in the first arc uh, that was so well done with uh, the artwork and the coloring and then we have the courier issue four out of five um, and there's nothing much to say about this series uh, it's basically I've seen it before um, not that interesting but still a fun read um, so yeah it's gonna be interesting to see how they conclude the series uh, but it's taken some twists and turns that have been a bit um, uh, easy, easy to spot beforehand uh, but yeah and then we have uh, Batman issue 27 uh, the war of uh, jokes and riddles interlude and this is basically uh, a humorous take on on uh, Kite Man's origins basically and how Batman uh, has uh, indirectly or directly caused uh, Kite Man or created Kite Man uh, so yeah uh, still weird to take a interlude two issues in to a big story arc but I guess that Michael Janin needed a some some time to catch up on artwork for the series in, in a, as a whole and it, it was a fun uh, issue uh, as a whole though uh, yeah Kite Man hell yeah <laughs> And then we have Trinity, issue 11. Uh, I think I've been a bit blinded by the artwork. Uh, I do like uh, Francis Manipal's artwork, but I have started to lose interest in the stories that they are being that are being told. And I hope I think it's Rob Williams that's gonna take over uh, from Fa Francis Manipal now. If Rob Williams can pull it off. I might stick to the title. Uh, I, I, I'm gonna stick with it uh, through this uh, next arc at least. But if they don't um, pull it together or give it a good creative uh, push into something more interesting, uh, I might drop it. And I hear Francis Marple is off the title. Uh, I think he's going to do a Earth One story for uh, Aquaman. I believe. Another title that's been disappointing lately is Batwoman issue 5. Uh, the artwork is great but I find the story really dull. Um, I was hoping for more. Uh, the first couple of issues promised more but that villain they used, the Many Hands of Death organization, didn't feel like a villain. Uh, and I feel like the first arc has been built up towards the second arc which haven't started yet and they still do this wrap up uh, sort of issue to tie together these uh, threads that they think are loose I don't I don't know uh, if it doesn't get better within the next arc I'm dropping this title now we have aliens dead orbit by James Stoko on art and writing uh, this series does a good job in kind of to illustrate the claustrophobia you might have felt with alien movies and the sense of urgency in, in every scene basically. Uh, it really does uh, deliver on the thriller uh, aspects of the alien universe. Um, and the aliens are really well drawn uh, the, all the details in each panel is just jaw-dropping uh, I really do like this and it's gonna be interesting to see how 
he wraps this four issue miniseries uh, up with the last issue now. Uh, but yeah, it's really good story so far. And we have Invincible Iron Man number 9. Uh, I felt that the artwork in some scenes, uh, particularly the battle scenes over Latveria with the many Doom armors basically, um, was a bit sloppy. Uh, and the story is a bit sloppy, <laughs> at least to me. It feels like it doesn't have a clear direction. Uh, it feels more like an interlude or uh, in between stories, storylines. Uh, and I think they are trying to set up a new nemesis for Riri. And then we have Royal City issue 5. Uh, a while back I decided to drop this title uh, after issue 5. Uh, and then decide when I read issue 5 if I'm gonna put it back on my pull list. And yeah, I did. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I find this series really well written, well drawn interesting and I hear that Jeff Lemire is gonna take this the series in a totally new direction with issue 6 in October so I'm excited for that as well uh, yeah cool cool series and then we have EXO Manowar issue 5 uh, it basically is a freight train going <laughs> straight forward uh, and we are getting closer and closer to uh, Arik uh, donning the Exo Manowar uh, suit, even though he does not want to do that. <laughs> uh, and I think it's gonna be in issue 6 or maybe 7 that he does that. Um, and I do find the artwork awesome. It's a good follow-up to Tom Thomas Diorello and I do like this uh, format of the book with the cardstock uh, covers and the storytelling is just uh, yeah it's a good sci-fi story <laughs> and then we have uh, Batman comics uh, 961 and more of the same uh, from 960 uh, I still like it a lot uh, I'm trying to see how they're going to tie the two stories the parallel stories with Satan and Batman and Batwing, Batwoman, Orphan and so on uh, together towards the end of the arc uh, and yeah it's gonna be interesting uh, I find the artwork great uh, and I want to know more about Satan <laughs> here we have the Flash issue 27 the wrap-up of the uh, running scared story arc and it's gonna I think what plays out here is gonna play into the next arc with all the neg negative uh, speed force uh, is it called that? At least uh, I find that um, sort of that part of the flash really interesting, uh, the dark part, uh, and yeah. And then we have Black Hammer issue 11, really good issue. Uh, we're starting to question some of the events in this town and some of the people in this town and what's being done to the people in this town if there is a town or if it's just a smoke screen um, and it's all started when Black Hammer's daughter showed up and when she started to question things and that the library carries books that are blank and there's no history of the town and stuff like that uh, I find all that interesting and then uh, the character development in each, each issue is just, ah, oh, I like it. <laughs> and it's gonna be interesting to see what uh, Jeff Lemire does with the, no, not the Nordstrom, uh, but um, the guy that drew issue uh, 9 and it's gonna be drawing issue 12. Um, he drew Ether as well. Um, I'm gonna it's interesting to see what this four issue miniseries Frankenstein and the evil uh, team of doom I, I don't know uh, Professor Frankenstein I think no yeah I'm gonna look into that uh, later uh, it's gonna be interesting to see what that's gonna be about uh, I kind of like the cover image they showed uh, on San Diego Comic-Con I think it was then 
Um, yeah, still really good series. And the last issue of this haul is a series that I came across in a bookstore of all places. Uh, Crosswind issue 1. Uh, it's basically a Freaky Friday situation with a housewife uh, that's being uh, a bit of a uh, scared mouse basically. And then we have this ruthless hitman. Uh, and these two kind of switch bodies and that's going to be interesting to see what they do with it. Um, that's it. So, um, if you have picked up any of these issues and have your thoughts on them, please let me know in the uh, comments down below. Uh, let's have a discussion about it. And if you agree with me, you don't agree with me, just uh, leave a comment down below and uh, let's talk about it. <laughs> Uh, until next time, have a great week of reading and see you around. Bye-bye.